One ring to rule them all. One ring to find them. One ring to bring them all. And in the darkness, fight them. We shot the three Lord of the Rings films um, back to back over an 18 month period, but The Fellowship of the Ring was really the first one that we were shooting. <laughs> we were figuring it out as we were going along. I mean, this was a film crew in New Zealand led by me, and we had had very little experience doing large budget movies. I mean, it was a case of everyone just, just feeling like we were the luckiest people in the world to be able to um, do the things we could do. One ring to rule them all. The interesting thing with The Fellowship of the Ring that I find now is that it has relatively few digital effect shots. Films like Return of the King, King Kong or The Hobbit have got over 2,000 CGI shots in them. Um, Fellowship of the Ring has 550. So a lot of it was done practically. Um, the good old days, eh? <laughs> I always wanted to do the Black Riders CGI, the, 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 the horsemen, because I thought there would be something about their movements and their fluidity that would be creepy if they were CGI, but we just couldn't afford it. As it was, I tended to shoot in slow motion with sort of rather stylized camera angles because it was the only way I could make them look vaguely creepy. The scene where they are fighting the cave troll in Moria, we were filming the actors doing their part of the scene. Obviously, there was no troll there. And at that point, we, you know, we didn't really know whether we could create this troll. I mean, we'd never done anything like that in New Zealand before. It was our own CG company that was doing it, and it was very much um, in its infancy at that stage. That's my Ray Harryhausen scene, because I'm a huge Harryhausen fan. Um, and I, I, I shot the cave troll fight using much the same style and techniques that he would have, maybe the Cyclops fight in the Seventh Voyage of Sinbad. Um, except I was able to move the camera around more. I was always aware that, that Harryhausen had to have very static cameras because of the, the stop-motion process that he was doing, so I was determined to do my Harryhausen scene, but handheld. So the, the handheld nature of that um, fight is deliberate. I wanted it to feel very immediate and unlike any monster fight we'd ever seen before at that stage. We were shooting these movies, and all that we were reading in the press at the time was the fact that um, it was, you know, an unknown New Zealand filmmaker who had been entrusted with this huge amount of money that New Line were gambling everything on, on banking three films at the same time. And there was a strong sense in these stories that the films were probably not going to work and the studio would be bankrupt. Um, <laughs> which is, which is a, it's a motivator in actual fact because when you're reading this and you're making the films and you're right in the thick of it, um, you just think, well, you know, stuff you, we're going to prove you wrong. <laughs> and it actually gives you, it sort of juices you up a little bit to kind of really try to deliver the goods. Mr. Fuller? It's the ring, isn't it? It's getting heavier. The Two Towers was always regarded as a difficult one because, it, you know, it's the middle, it's the, it's the bridge film is what they call it, um, which means it doesn't have a beginning and doesn't have an end. Uh, but, but I kind of, I, I like that. I mean, The Two Towers is actually my favourite of the three movies. Um, and, I, and I really like jumping into the story. I, I, I like the fact that after the fairly leisurely set-up of the Fellowship of the Ring and just getting everyone on the road and underway, that we didn't have to do any of that in The Two Towers. <laughs> I even refused to do a prologue. I know that New Line were very insistent that they wanted a, you know, a, 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 a five-minute prologue at the beginning to remind everybody what had happened in the Fellowship of the Ring. But I, I just thought that a year isn't that long a time. People will probably re remember, and um, and if you and if you go into the Two Towers without having seen the Fellowship of the Ring, maybe that wasn't the best idea. You fools! So we just jumped straight into it, and, I, and we came up with the idea of um, showing what happened when Gandalf plummeted down into the cavern. No! That actually wasn't in our original script. That was an idea we came up with uh, after the Fellowship it, it, it came out, in actual fact. The Fellowship had been released, and we wanted to figure out a way to, to, to kick off the two towers with a bit of a hiss and a roar. <laughs> What is it, Mr. Furlow? Gollum was a very difficult 
character because it was going to require a level of CGI that, that no one had really done at all at that stage, which is creating a, a um, very believable digital creature that could say dialogue, and it was essentially a member of the cast. They're thieves. They're filthy metal thieves. We stumbled our way through it. I mean, Andy Serkis was originally hired to do the voice only. We, we f knew that Gollum would be animated you know, in CGI, but we thought that Andy would just be providing a voice. And yet when um, he came down to New Zealand, we started to realise that Andy was so physical and, and, and what he was doing was so interesting with his body that we started to put him in front of the camera. So we started to actually shoot him um, just in like a grey tracksuit. Hurry, hobbits. The black gate is very close. And then about six months later, a long time later, Andy would be in a motion capture suit on, on a stage doing the performance that would actually be in the movie. My precious. I've always had an interest in battle scenes, and yet up to that point, I'd never had an opportunity in a movie to do a, a big battle scene. I was determined to make it large and to be able to put thousands of orcs and urukai on screen at any one time. But if you're dealing with five or 10,000 characters, you can't animate each one individually, so you have to figure out a way that they can animate themselves, which is basically giving them a brain. So we developed this, this very revolutionary system. We were the only company in the world that had done that. And it allowed us to do battle scenes with thousands and thousands of extras, which I thought was so cool because I'd grown up in looking at battles and movies where you have 100 extras or 200 extras and you use a lot of smoke to hide the fact that there's only, you know, that number, there's not really thousands. So I, I, I reveled in the, in the opportunity to just ha see these numbers on screen. It was a lot of fun. We didn't think too much about the individual movies when we were shooting. I mean, we, we literally treated it like one massive story. We didn't differentiate too much that we were, you know, shooting a, a scene from Fellowship of the Ring or a scene from Two Towers. We, we just were telling a linear story from the beginning to the end. We're almost there. I think that's what's nice about The Lord of the Rings, is it has, it has, a, um, it has a flow to it that, that you, you literally you know, can watch them all back to back and they and they have a unity to them that you I don't think you would have got anywhere close to that if we'd shot them two or three years apart as as individual films. Hail the victorious dad. Hail! I remember we were the luckiest filmmakers in the world because New Line felt that um, there should be no expense spared, quite, on, quite honestly. So we, we had the opportunity to shoot a lot more material in that last year um, to do new scenes for Return of the King. We were absolutely allowed to increase the number of visual effects shots, make the battle scenes bigger, make it more spectacular, because the studio wanted a, a grand climax to top anything that had gone before. It certainly benefited the siege at Minas Tirith, where we were able to put 100,000 extras on screen and have cavalry charges right into the thick of it. And those are very, very expensive, time-consuming shots to do. There's three scenes in Return of the King that I like the most. There's the Mumek uh, battle scene with these big elephant creatures, which, which was really fun to do. There's a spider scene where Sam confronts Shelob, because I'm terrified of spiders, and Shelob is me designing the spider that, that would scare me the most. Out of all the spiders I'm scared of, that thing would absolutely terrify me. So I was, it was all about me trying to freak myself out in that scene, <laughs> including the way the spider moved and the camera angles I used. I just, I just wanted to, to make something that gave me the heebie-jeebies as much as possible. And I also love the purity of the friendship between Frodo and Sam on their last climb up Mount Doom. I'm very, very proud of that. Um, and the performances are fantastic. Sam, they took the ring. They haven't. I thought I'd lost you, so I took it.
My biggest regret with the return of the King, I mean, it won all these Oscars, but the thing I still regret is that, is that, um, is that Sean Astin didn't get no nominated because I think his performance, he's the, he's the, the heart of that film. Um, you know, if Elijah's the soul, then, 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 then um, Sean Astin's the heart of it, and uh, I felt very upset for him that, that he, his acting w wasn't acknowledged.